All right, solar panels. Solar panels are, for troubleshooting, are pretty straightforward, actually. What you're going to want to measure, two things. First of all, you make sure the fuse is still there. How do you, can you tell? You go to the controller, you have a blanket on top of the solar panel, and you actually measure on the battery post of that, and they're generally exposed. There's set screws. You can actually get your little multimeter there, and you want to make sure that you see battery voltage at the controller. That's the first thing. You want to confirm, hey, do I have connectivity to my battery? Yes. Check. Great. Next. With a blanket on top of the solar panel, you disconnect the solar panel and you actually then put a multimeters in the leads. They're not connected to anything and you take away the blanket and you look at what the open voltage of that panel is. What is the voltage of the panel when it's actually simply and the sun's shining to it? You take that measurement, you write it down. Then you put a blanket back on, and their blanket is because you should never connect or disconnect anything under load. Like, you don't disconnect your vacuum cleaner from pulling it off the wall when it's working because you have arcing. So you never disconnect anything ever under load, ever, at home or on a boat. So the way to stop a solar panel is to cover it. If it's not outputting, no load, no charge. You reconnect it with a blanket on top, then you come back on here, and what you do is now you disconnect this fuse here, and then you measure what is the panel voltage this here should be the same when the batteries are disconnected. It should be the same because they're, they're talking and there's no load. It can, it's not converting anything. And you should see whatever was here should be here. If it's not, then you have a problem on this segment. And then you reconnect the fuse and now you measure what voltage is at the panels here and what is voltage here. And then you write all that stuff down and unfortunately you have to send it to someone. You have to. Well, maybe not, but you probably want to. You either send it to someone who installed them, you send it to the person who sold you the panels, or you send it to the manufacturer. But you're looking for different values. This panel is going to have a certain open, value, open, open voltage value. You want to make sure that you're in range, right? You want to make sure that if your batteries, remember your solar panels are not charging your batteries if your batteries are full. Like I get this all the time. I really don't understand. My solar panels are not working. I'm like, are your batteries full? Yes, they're full and they're not outputting. I don't see any amps coming from my solar panels. Well, yeah, of course. The controller is there to regulate the voltage. Do you want your batteries to be force-fed amps and volts regardless of their state of charge? No. Well, how could you expect this device to not do its job and to give this battery current and voltage when it doesn't need to? If these batteries are full, there's going to be no amps going from here to there. That's that job. The device here is to figure out, do the batteries need something? If they don't, I'm going to open the circuit, and maybe I'm going to pulse a little bit to give it something to flow charge, but there's not going to be a lot of current going through this wire if this battery is full. So when you test this, you bring the, solar ba the battery down, and you say, okay, now work. And you can't test this at night. You can't test this in a cloudy day. You test this high noon. And generally better is it summer, because if you do this in the wintertime when the sun is at high noon over the sky at that inclination, you're not going to get good results, right? You're going to want to test it generally between May, April, and maybe early parts of October to have some sort of value that is representative of what that solar panel can do when the sun is directly overhead. Because otherwise your numbers are just, you're off, right? And that's how you test a solar panel install. Regardless, solar series or singular is the same thing. You just write stuff down. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo, but you write it down and then you send it to someone and that person looks at it and says, yeah, you got a problem or no, you don't. But it's very important to know what your battery voltage is. Remember, if your battery is full or a battery charger is connected to that or you have multiple controllers and the batteries are completely full, well, they're gonna be outputting very little current. Like on my boat, when my battery is completely full, my alternator is running, I'm connected to shore power maybe, or I'm just connecting to shore power, and my batteries are completely full, my solar panels are not going to be outputting a lot because my controllers are looking at the battery voltage and are going, I don't need to output a lot, the batteries are already full. So solar is not this thing that forces you to take a charge. If it did, it would ruin batteries more than charge them. Any questions on solar? Uh, what is the average lifespan of an average solar panel? I would say 
10, 20 probably, 15. Now, I've got owners that had small little boats, like a 26-footer that went to Hawaii, like a Contessa 26, and they had solar panels on the rim, and this panel saw a lot of green water. That panel did not last 20 years. You know, it depends. You know, normal coastal here, no problem. I'd say 10, 15, 20. My panels on my boat are measured and quantified output that is logged, because I'm a geek, every year. And they're still outputting after six years exactly what I had when I put them in six years ago. So, I mean, they're going to degrade over time, but they're, they're pretty good. Other questions on solar? Unless you have solar, I mean, this only happens when you don't think you're charging enough, right? 